Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. We have some breaking news and it's coming in from Fabrizio Romano that Manchester United and Andre Inanna have agreed personal terms. Personal terms are agreed. The contract is ready to go as soon as the bid is accepted and Inter have asked for a 60 million euro package but sources believe 55 million euros could be the right number for it to happen. Talks continue with Manchester United and Inter and we are going to improve our bid. We've put an improved bid in everyone for Andre and Anna. It is now worth 50 million euros plus, uh, we, sorry, with add-ons included and that is around 45 million euros plus 5 million in add-ons. So a lot of news coming out from Fabrizio Romano. A new fresh bid has gone in for Manchester United. It is the second one round. Personal terms are agreed. Everything's ready to go as long as the money is sorted out. So I don't think we're too far off on this deal right now. It's exciting. I think the second signing of the season is on its way and we'll just have to see. I think the belief is 55 million euros could do it. So very similar to the Mount thing where we had 50, I think it was three bids with the Mount thing. We have three bids and it went through. This is our second one. I think this the third one now is probably around the corner and that one's probably going to happen and we're probably going to meet the 55 million euro mark, which I don't think is a bad price at all. But that is the breaking news and we've got a forum here to discuss it all as well. On the forum, we have Faz, Ginge and Kev. Welcome everybody to the show. It was a big rush here. All the comments are coming in as, I, I mean, everyone's really excited about this, I think. And yet we have had some cryptic posts from David De Gea and it is an awkward situation, but this is where we're at. It looks like Manchester United are going for Anana and I think this deal is going to happen very soon. But Faz, I'll come to you straight off the bat. We've seen now the second bid's gone in, personal terms ready to go. How close do you think this is? Yeah, I think it should get signed and delivered. Shall we have another Nando's bet? Oh, I know, because this time last week we had the here we go for Mount, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. I think it'll get done by next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, something like that. I don't, I don't think um, this should be delayed any anymore. Um, the second bid was imminent I I've still got my clip in my hand. <laughs> the second bid was imminent anyway, so um, I'm just glad that uh, we, we're going to have a goalkeeper just in time, probably, for for majority of the tour anyways. Um, so yeah, that's the, that's the most positive thing. I don't want them to pay 55, I'll be honest, that's one thing. I think 50 is the max, you know, pay that. Again, be a bit shrewd because we want to count our pennies to make sure yeah. we can go and get the Rasmus <laughs> Hoyland and maybe Amrabat as well. So I hope they can accept this, uh, this uh, 50 million bid. If they don't, I think add some more add-ons, you know, chuck some more claws in there, make it into a 55 package, but don't spend upfront 55 for a player just just now because we don't have a lot of money. I mean, Ginge, I know you're a big fan of De Gea. We no. had that little argument last time you were on. But what do you think of Anana? And do you agree with Faz in the sense of the money? Because for me personally, I think this is quite a good price for what yeah, he is. No, uh, I disagree with Faz in terms of money. I think he's a top-notch goalkeeper. Uh, I said it when I was at Ajax. He's just an unbelievable shot stopper. Good with his feet as well. Calm. We've seen it in the final. We've seen it all season of Inter. I think 55 million for a keeper of that quality is unbelievable. Uh, if you know Kepa Ariza Balaga was what 72, I think it was something around that, and he's he's nowhere near that. So the fact we're getting Onana for about 50 million is is exceptional. Yeah, it is, it's amazing, honestly, it is. I mean, we've got a member here, um, Andre Martino, saying, I was blocked on Twitter two years ago. Can I be blocked or blocked <laughs> to see the socials? Um, put in the no, username. you're obviously blocked for a reason. We'll you stay blocked. Put in username, we'll see. I mean, <laughs> 100, pa 100 pound super chat. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> mess up, blocked. you have to pay up. <laughs> I mean, Kev, what do you think about this? Obviously, on top of this news, you did. have you seen the David De Gea tweet of the circus emoji? I'm very confused what's going on here, but let's talk about Anana. Obviously, this bid has gone in. The first bid was 45 million euros with add-ons. Now it's 50 million euros plus add-ons. So we'd have added that 5 million. Personal terms are agreed, ready to go. What are your initial thoughts of it? I agree with uh, Mr. Angry Ginge. I've got Thank to say you. that the price uh, that has been set, and I said it last week, didn't I? I said that, that is the kind of, uh, f for the goalkeeper that you, you potentially get in, yep. it is that bargain in Aldi. I said it the, the other week, you know, that's in the middle aisle where yeah. you go, it seems too good to be true. Uh, Manchester United, uh, what I will say about David De Gea and the way United, I feel like I'm banging my head against the brick wall, but I think the way that they treated him is, is total lack of class. Disgusting. It, it really is. I go, uh, Kurt Zuma treats his cat better than, <laughs> than what Manchester United have done to David De Gea. I think it's awful. And people are throwing at me on social media, yeah, but Kevin was on 375 grand a week, this, that. That there is a way of doing things, and you, you you have to be you have to show your class. You know this guy has been with Manchester United for ten years, 
and it's sad the way it's come to an end. You know, if you're in a relationship, you know, you can't go 10 years and then change, I don't know, get on Facebook and change it so yeah. it's complicated, then I'm single, with no explanation. And you know the fact that David De Gea is putting these cryptic tweets out, whatever you want to read into it, is the fact that Manchester United have not told him what is going on. At the same time, don't get me wrong, Anana uh, will be a fantastic... Yeah, it'll be great. a game-changer at Manchester United, but it, it's a very fickle world, football, and I, I, I say that point again, it does not sit right with me. Slow Spot News says, I love Anana's style of play. Sweep the keeper reminds me a lot of Bartes. Just what we need. 50 mil plus 5 mil add-on should do it. I mean, I can't believe everyone on this panel and the producer let me go live with that clip in my hair at the start. <laughs> I thought it was just part of your style today. I was today. like, right, great. Thanks, everyone. That isn't what I was aiming for, but it is what it is. How did I just follow? This is a different uh, look. I thought she's rocking something different. This yeah. is what it is when you're with lads on all the time. When you're what do you want me to say? You get people, <laughs> imagine, well, people imagine if you did want chance to say you're beautiful. We don't get that. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. please, he gets porno Kev. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm line. dealing with. So, it is what it is. You just... <laughs> Well, you should be hold your L today. Hold my L, okay. <laughs> I'm probably one of the best videos as well, the Inanna bit. I'm high A with my clip yeah. hanging out of ways, what it is. Harry Perman says, Kepa was 80 million euros, and for 55 is good. Yeah. Enlin says, instead of signing Rasmus Hoyland, we should get... We should... I can't read what that... We should get Gift Auburn from Gents. He has 48 goals and assists in 46 matches. Okay, well, let's. I mean, let's talk about Anana a little bit more because it is the breaking news here. And Faz, you did want to mention your piece about David De Gea, so I'll give you your opportunity to do so. Obviously, but you know, it's obvious that Ten Hag has wanted, you know, maybe that more modern goalkeeper now. You kind of were thinking, you know, Anana Costa, which one we should go for. Overall, are you happy with this? And what did you want to say about De Gea? Because I know you had something to say. Look, firstly, have, bringing in Anana is fantastic because it's like having a extra centre back almost yeah uh, and and now you know the more I sleep on these things the more I kind of have clarity that look Mason Mount is a clearly a type of player that he wants Onana is clearly a type of player he wants because I kept saying it last season system 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 and these both players will benefit the system of how we want to play pressing the opposition in their own half making sure the ball doesn't stay in our half for too long and Onana and Mount are going to be crucial to this type of football going next season so I'm very very glad it also allows our ball playing centre backs to press higher up and play on the halfway line pitch you know touch wood Harry Maguire is not here next season and and all will be okay um, so overall I'm okay and you know what I already know Andre Onana is going to make some mistakes because every goalkeeper in the world makes yeah. mistakes yeah. every goalkeeper so it's fine I'm not going to have it over his head that, oh, you came because of David here. I love David here, uh, so I'm going to hold it. No, it's OK, he's going to make mistakes. But overall, if we concede two goals and score four, I think generally we will be happier. He might, And that's where you'll get that thing, Faz, of when he does make his first mistake. And there's no doubt he will yeah, because yeah, he is well, a risk taker. Does, does. Uh, that, that's when that, that, this saying of De Gea would have said yeah, that. Yeah, De Gea yeah, wouldn't yeah. have but, done that. But, we, we need to look, obviously get away from that. But you have at to the be... same time, like... De Gea's made plenty no, of mistakes. Ho, ho, you so have to be, yeah, exactly. I was going to say, you have to be balanced. And I'm coming from a balanced perspective here that we are going to lose out maybe a great shot stopper, but then Onana is a great shot stopper in his own right. But on top of it, we will be adding other things to our attacking arsenal that we don't have now. And teams will be watching that as well. They'll be thinking, well, we can't do certain things that we used to do with Manchester United because they have Martinez, they have Onana, they have Bruno Fernandes, Bruno Fernandes and Mount. And, and that will just benefit us going forward, you know. What's to say Andre Onana would have been the difference between a 2-1 or a 2-2 in an FA Cup final that we just, you know, lost yep. out? It, it could come down to that bit. Yes, David De Gea should have done better, whatever, but, you know, we'll just have to see. But, rewinding back to David De Gea, I just want to, which camera, I think I'm on that camera, whichever camera I'm on, the people who think because he earns 375 a week and that it's okay for him to be treated like that, you guys are miserable. I'll tell you this straight. To your faces, all of you guys, hundreds and thousands of people across the... You guys are miserable. Because to just how much do I have to pay you per hour or per week for me to have the ability to say and do whatever I want with you? At what point do you sol sell your soul? Never. You are a human no matter how much you earn. And the man is being treated like an absolute... Valt Weghorst and Marcel Sovitsa will get treated better and they're lonely signings. 
And yeah. this man has spent over a decade of his life. Forget everything. Has he? Look, he's lost his games, okay? So what do you want to do? Crucify him? He's also one of Drag games. him through the mud now when he's leaving? No, you don't. This is not... And this is what, what hurts me is not how the club is treating him because I don't have control over that. None of us do. Arnold and Murta, the idiots that they are, they'll do what they do. But the fans that sit in there behind their phone screen and twiddling their thumbs and think it's okay, you guys are miserable. That's where you are, you're miserable fans. Get behind your player even though he's not your player because he spent a decade of his life here. A whole decade. And the same thing they say, well, they didn't do this with Cantona. They didn't, there was no uproar with Roy Keane. Because a lot of you were, were a cell. You were not even born. Twitter wasn't even existent then. If, if social media was existent when Cantona and our legends previously got treated like that, I promise you there would be a huge outro. Yeah, yeah. I promise. Now the power of social media allows everybody to have an opinion and, and everybody does and people just think, yeah, he's a millionaire, he's okay, he'll ride off into the sunset. Well, millionaire, millionaires have feelings too, you know. They bleed just like us. These are human beings and the fact that he had to make another tweet today has made my blood boil. I don't care he's not Manchester United player anymore, but he was for over a decade. And what an embarrassment it is from outside looking in that this is how Manchester United treat their players. Well said, Fass. Oh, well I mean, Ben Ashin says, first off, great job, everyone. This will be an incredible signing. Never forget Chelsea paid £72 million for Kepper. And, yeah, I think a lot of people, a lot of people are bigging you up on that one, Faz. I've got to say, like... No, I agree. The way we've treated him is is, is really, really poor. He's, he's, he, we've handled it so, so wrong. But Oh, you tweeted, you've got tears in your eyes. No, when I knew he was leaving. Yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm happy he is leaving. Like, I'm never going to stay away from that. But I, don't, I do think the way, <laughs> the, the way that's been ha it's been handled is is poor. Like, it is. Like, it, it should never have happened like this. But, you know, sometimes stuff like this happens and you've just kind of got to... And can I just say, oh, no, Faz it. brought up two names then, uh, Eric Cantona and Roy Keane. I, I was around in them days, believe it or not. I, I know <laughs> no, I'm quite yeah, young. Like, we believe but, it, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> thanks very much, <laughs> Roy. Yeah. Cheers. Uh, they left under a bit of a clap. You know, Eric Cantona just announced one day that he was retiring from Manchester United. Uh, and Roy Keane was obviously ushered out of the club for things that he said on yeah. United's in-house channel about a, a really bad defeat at, at Middlesbrough, I think it was. You know, some of the things he said about the youngsters, Sir Alex Ferguson didn't like the truth and he was kind of ushered out. So in them terms, it doesn't really match up. We're talking about a player here who's given 10 years of service. Yeah. His contract has run out and Manchester United, for some reason, haven't even told him what's, what's happening. He, he'll, he will know what's happening now. Uh, probably as much well, as we do well, because he'll, he'll, he'll know because he'll be looking at Romano's He's just going to be looking at Twitter, <laughs> refreshing it, yeah. going, oh, you know, they're, they're in for Onana. An and that basically is telling David De Gea... He's gone. Yeah, we're, we're certainly not offering you a contract. And if you do sign it, you're not going to be number one next what's season. I'd be highly, say? highly surprised if Ten Hag hasn't had the conversation yeah, with Of him. course, but what's to say? Ten Hag has had a conversation with Frankie de Jong last summer and that was his star boy and look what that happened. Ten Hag is having conversations with everyone, but... What's to say David De Gea was, was OK with being a number two? How do we not know that? Yeah, no, I agree How with that. How do we not yeah. know that? What if David De Gea told his family members that, you know what, actually, I'll stay. The money's good, sure. I'll get the same money in Saudi Arabia or more. But you know what? I'm OK because I like where I am. It's comfortable. As players progress throughout their career and they get older, they want more stability and less risk. Right? They want to be somewhere where they're comfortable and then can cash in and, and finish their career. What's to say he was okay with being number two? And what's to say is Manchester United are holding him back as well? Because Manchester United are holding back Henderson. They are holding back Tom Heaton as well. They're not, it's not that they're doing with one keeper. They're doing with all of the keepers. All of them are de being treated weirdly. One of the keepers can be sold and he's still not being sold. David De Gea is better than being a number two, though. Yeah. I, I can't imagine sure, it. I think at this point of his career, where 15, he's at now, 15 yeah. clubs easily in the Prem. I think he still starts. For yeah, I was going to say he's, he's still getting game time. At, you know, week in, week out yeah, at another club. It's yeah. just at this time and moment where we are at Manchester United. We're, not for the we're money we're on. willing to pay, though. Well, no, not that's for the money. Why, but that's why he's sticking around. Do you know what I mean? It, it, the, the, the fact is, we have massively overpaid on wages a lot of time. And, you know, players yeah. get used to that sometimes. I don't agree with the way this has happened. We should have told him, but. I mean, I'd, I'd be interested to know how this actually ends up playing out. Like, when we sign Anana, are they going to announce Day is officially mm. leaving? The club hasn't even mm. announced it yet. All the announcers that little statement saying, you know, we're still in conversation. 
So it is, it is strange. You know, the funny thing is that people pick and choose the money and the wages when it benefits them. Because when Anthony Martial's making a million pounds for every goal he scores, people don't say anything. Martial scored single-digit Premier League goals in three seasons. You know, and I don't he, think anyone here agrees with Martial's wage. Yeah, but people pick and choose. When I mention Martial's wages, they say, well, don't hold it against him. It's not his fault. But then David De Gea makes 375 and it's his fault, isn't he? Because he, cl clearly, if you make 375 a week, you shouldn't have feelings. It's no, very I'm, easy to put that I'm to an this agenda. This is why I struggle to move PLAs on, though. No. I'm not saying that, that, that you should be treated differently because you're on a higher wage, but that's why you struggle to move players on because we put them on such a good wage. But Mario <clears> Franco <throat> says De Gea's treatment is absolute travesty. Hate him all you want, but he has been the only player who kept us relevant since Sir Alex Ferguson. Everyone's allowed an opinion. Ronnie Dodge <laughs> and Anna will give crowd panic attacks, but I'm excited. Yeah, this is the thing. It's a really bittersweet thing because I know a lot of yeah, people have is. a sour taste in their mouth over De Gea thing, which is yeah. understa completely understandable. But also, people are excited to get a new we signing. We can still be excited. So yeah, it's like, no it's doubt excited. It is like a bit of bittersweet, isn't it? Darren Mullaney says, who will we get in for reserve keeper? We love doing a little loney reserve keeper yeah. signing every single summer, don't we? So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, Yuri the 67 says legends don't always get farewells Savage welcome to the United Stand Members Club and yeah I think that's everything for now but I mean let's talk a little bit about what do you expect Anana to be brought in on wages wise Ginge what would you expect from that do you know what he's on at Inter Milan anyone questions are good one I'll chat will know yeah have a look I reckon if the hay was on 375 Oh, no, no, I can't imagine he's going to be on ridiculous into Milan. I think he would accept 200 to 250 a week, I reckon, depending on what his wages at Inter Milan. Because if it's, if it's a lot higher, then he'll accept it no matter what. If he's on 100k, he'll take 200. He is on 67 grand a week. Okay, then, yeah. He'll def, I no, reckon. That means United are coming in and going. Yeah. A million pound a week, not a penny <laughs> more, not a penny less. No, I reckon he's on, what, 60, 67? 67 grand a week, yeah. Uh, oh, into, I, okay, well... It's Man United, so we'll pay more. But I reckon Onana would be happy on about 150 grand a week. I was going to yeah. say that, Bob. I'd say that's about yeah. right. 120, 130 is max. Isn't Dean Henderson on 120? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Isn't it? But the thing but is with this as well. You know how crazy it is. A Champions League final where the keeper yeah. is on less than 100 grand a Man. week. Let that sink in. Yeah. That's, that's why I mean why our wages in. are so bad. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how poor are our wages? But if this was a striker, he'd be on about 250, but because it's a goalkeeper, he's on less. I think 150 is fair in, your, in, your, in you know, all of your opinion. Yeah. But I would say, again, if you want to fix the structure, you put him at 120 plus bonuses and stuff like that. Get a, yeah, get 120 a, plus get a golden glove and you'll get X yeah. amount, you know? Well, apparently a golden glove doesn't make you a goalkeeper, a good goalkeeper anymore. Yeah. So. Mm. It's a golden sock, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get a, let's get a <laughs> poll going in the chat over what do you think Anana will earn at Manchester United? What, what, not what you think he should earn, but what will we give him at Manchester United? We'll get a range in there. We'll go 100 grand, 150, 200 grand, because, you know, you never know with Manchester United. Let's get a poll going in the chat and see what you guys think about that. I honestly think 150 is quite fair. Mm. Coming in as a starting number one at Manchester United, mm -hmm. 150 is fair. And I think, again, it's a good way to kind of get... We, we've spent so much money on, like, wages for goalkeepers. That point when we had De Gea on 375 and we had Henderson on 150 at the same time, on 120, I think he was on. Like, that's just ridiculous. So getting the wages down is good. Obviously, it's not our money, but we'll have to wait and see. But it's the Premier League as well. Don't forget, yeah. you know, revenue is bigger. Yep. You know, Manchester United revenue is bigger than Inter Milan's revenue, so you have to consider that as well. What so it should be is that, yeah. incentive based. That that's the way contracts yeah. should be going now, because there's so many players out there that are just well, United are a classic example of it. How many players are just sat there on contracts? You know, they're not asked if United win, lose, draw. But at least if you have a basic wage, and then you can make it up to, let's say, in Onana's case. Uh, he gets put on, say, yeah, 100, 100, even 100 grand basic. Yeah. And the rest then, yeah, if you keep a clean sheet, yeah. if you nutmeg Haaland, you can have another 10 grand, <laughs> you know, whatever whatever it is based yeah. on as a goalkeeper. And it should be the same all the way through the team because incentives will... It Thank gives you that incentive to perform at a higher level. Well, have you seen... Have you seen the, that little beef between Haaland and, and yeah, Banana? Yeah, yeah. I love that. And have you seen his little interview? Yes, where I did. Where he's like, why would I be scared of him? That's yeah. exactly the type of attitude you need to be the United keeper. Do you think we'll get him in before pre-season? I reckon it's going to be done next week, yeah. Yeah, pre-season starts on the 12th of July next week. I think it's Wednesday, the first game yeah, it against is Wednesday, Leeds. Yeah. 
So, we, I mean, I think Eric Ten Hag needs the keeper in to start working with the defender, yeah. start working with the whole team, get his style of play across. Doesn't really have too much time to waste. I think Ten Hag's pushing this as well from what we've heard. So, it'll be interesting to see. Let's have a little prediction now before we move on to the next topic of when do we think we'll get the here we go for Anana? I'm going to get the chat in on this as well. Let's see what you guys are saying. At the moment, just to recap, in case you didn't see the start of the show, it was a little bit manic. Basically, Manchester United have put in a second bid for Andre Nana of 50 million euros with add-ons. It's 45 million euros with 5 million euros add-ons included. Romano says that personal terms are agreed. The contract is ready to go when all the fees are accepted. But Inter are looking more towards 55 million euros to get this deal done. So basically, we need to meet over 5 million euros, which I think shouldn't be too hard to do. It's a second bid. So when do we think the here we go is going to be? I'll, let, I'll go this way across. Kev? I would have thought f things are going to move very quickly now. It's obviously Manchester United. Uh, the, the player wants to move. Manchester United yeah. want the player. And from what you read, Inter Milan are certainly not going to stand in the way. It's just finding that middle ground. So you've got this kind of game of cat and mouse haven't you? it's just classic business negotiation in it where you find a middle ground everyone's happy so I mean if, if that's kicking off like today what we got Friday I think sometime over the weekend and then maybe Monday I think I think Ten Hag will want this in place before that that first friendly like you say it's getting him into training and this is going to change the dynamics of Manchester United totally the defence really has to get on board now with you know th this keeper and Ten Hag now is getting the keeper that he craved you know yeah. it changes the the playing style differently stop looking at me like that Beth that smile as if to say I told you so she it's knew this that. day was coming it's not that it's just and this is no <sighs> people get confused over my want for a new goalkeeper with a disrespect to De Gea it's no disrespect to De Gea whatsoever I'm just so happy that we're getting an honour because I think he's going to be so good. And I can't the wait The game changer to was watch the him. Champions League final. I have said this the other week. That, the performance from Anana in that final against Manchester City, who are arguably what the greatest team on the planet at this moment in time, was outrageous. It was absolutely mesmerising what he did. <laughs> I go back. I'm not agreeing with that. He took the ball <laughs> around Haaland effortless, effortlessly. Do you know? Haaland had, like, had to foul him, didn't he? Yeah. I actually, I'm just watching it and I'm thinking, this guy is absolutely crazy. But at the same time, what an addition to Manchester United. You know, fingers crossed when it does go through. Well, we've got a couple of super chats before I come to Ginge. Jack Fawcett, as you guys will know, either from Twitter or from a few United shows, has said, happy days. He's very happy about this. We've also got one in from... Oh, God, why does it always come off my screen Steve Runs says what would you rate a window of Hoyland Mount Amrabat and Danana meaning we miss out on a centre back and a second more accomplished striker probably rate it like an 8 out of 10 I think that's a pre really pretty good window if you get that maybe a 7 because Hoyland's maybe not quite ready I think that's mm. a good window we're fixing the spine of the team there that Tommy kid says, just want to say, hey, Ginge, and go the Red Devils. Go on, Tommy, lad. Yes, thank you for <laughs> yeah, that. Shit. And have we got any others in that we've seen? No, not that I can see so far, but if you want to put any chats in, guys, get them across, and I'll try to, to read them out. We'll go through how we'd rate that window, because you obviously clearly disagree with me on that. But, Ginge, what, when do you reckon we'll get this? Um, well, this second bid needs to be rejected so they can get more money, so then we need to put a new one in. So I reckon, I reckon it'll be agreed on about 55 million. I reckon we'll get the here we go on a Tuesday. I'm going to say Tuesday. Tuesday. Day before That's... the match. Yeah. Manchester United, nothing ever is straightforward. Are we having a Nando's bet then? Are you feeling... I'm, you're going to be surprised on what I'm going to say. You're going to say think, tomorrow? I think Thursday. Do you? Yeah, yeah, I was going to say this Thursday. evening, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. I Wait. was going to say, I, I put out on threads, threads, if anyone's got that, I was just no. trying, I was just kind of going, it's the new Instagram Twitter, I put out on threads before, I said, when do you think we'll get Anana here? We go, this is before we got the latest news, and I said, I think it might be Monday, but you know, now all it needs, all, the contract's ready to go, you get here we go when the fee's agreed. I don't see why it would take too long to agree a fee. I'm going to go tomorrow. I think we could get the here we go tomorrow. All we've got to do is that find that five million euros. And if Ten Hag wants him in for Oslo, that's if he comes in for next week. You've got to, then you've got to go to do your medical. You've got to do all the TikToks that they want to do. It seems like they spent about <laughs> you know ten hours doing them with Mason Mount and new one every single day. And you so. spend about twenty hours watching them. Arnold's <laughs> rooting. You know me. You know me. You know me. I've been watching. Arnold's them rooting down the back of the sofa now, looking for this five million mm. bit of loose change to try and get it put together. Mm. I know. I mean, if we'll see. But I mean, 
Speaking on that, Darren Mullaney says, do you think we will, get, we will get any players in after Tor in August and who? Yeah, I think that's when we'll go for the Amrabat, that second midfielder. I think that'll be in August. I think that'll be a late one because, you know, we've got to sell players to move on to that. But Romano did mention other things on his little update that he gave. And one of them was that Donny van der Beek has concrete opportunities to leave Manchester United this summer. The feeling is that he's going to leave Man United and he's got opportunities in Europe. This moves on to the fact of we have been linked to Amrabat very strongly recently. Ten Hag is pushing for a second midfielder and I think, I'm sure everyone's going to be happy about that because we all know we need someone there in case Casemiro is not in the team. We, we do need that. But in order to do so, we need to sell. So, I mean, Faz, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's time for Donny van der Beek to move mm -hmm. his career on. Um, very unfortunate how it ended, especially with the injury. You know, um, no hard feelings. I wish him all the best. Um, but... Um, that's what you need to do when you're a club that wants to be ruthless is is yeah. say okay it didn't work you know Manchester City are looking to get rid of players after one one season Real Madrid are looking to get rid of players after one season and these are top class players by the way mm -hmm. that we're talking about so but in fairness Van der Beek's not really had much of a no, go is no, it? No, is he not a player that. you'd be yeah. looking to keep and think I agree, I agree he's had chances he has, yeah. he has, I, I believe he has had chances he hasn't put in unbelievable performances. Yes, he's not had a straight run of chances because he's always been getting injured, but to say he's not had an opportunity, I think is wrong. He has had an opportunity. The opportunities was short because of injuries, but he's, he's had a chance. He hasn't shown, obviously he's not shown um, the managers that he's worth putting in the team every week. So I, th I think it is time to go. But I do, I do like him, I do want to The first well. thing is when Ten Hag signed uh, for Manchester United, everybody was hell bent that He's the guy who would know Donny van der Beek yeah, inside yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. Man Manchester United went on tour. Donny van der Beek was used here and there. But actually, van der Beek wasn't badly injured for a little bit of time. He was fit. Ten Hag didn't bring him into the team. Mm -hmm. He actually used other players like Scott McTominay and you know other better players, Casemiro and etc. In comparison to Donny van der Beek, he used other players. I remember, the chat will know, um, there was a particular game where Ten Hag did a interview that's what I'm going to reference it to he did an interview whilst on the pitch and he said I've given him chances it's up to him and this was the interviewer asking Ten Hag specifically about Van Der Beek and yeah. he said it's up to him to prove it mm. if he proves it he'll stay in the team if he doesn't he won't yeah. and um, that's his player by the way it's not like he has to get to know the player or whatever. That is his player. He's the one that moved him on eventually anyways, in previously. So he would know how best to utilise Donny van der Beek. And he's had, he's had very, very small amounts of moment that was OK. And Manchester United fans are very good at making OK look like gold. And in all honesty, he's not been gold. No. And I, firstly, would have been like, if van der Beek was to stay... If Ten Hag was using him, I would say, yes, keep him, because that's his player. He knows what he's going to do with him, just like he's done with Ganacho and all these other players. But if he's not using him, and if it's clearly up for sale, because Ten Hag has vetoed uh, Lindelof's deal. Ten Hag has said Lindelof's not for sale, and he's come in just for a little bit at the, towards the latter end yeah. of the season, and he's shown Ten Hag it's OK. The guy wanted a right back. Right backs right now, no problem, yeah. it's OK. If Donny van der Beek was that player, I promise you Ten Hag would have said, it's OK, keep Donny van der Beek. But he's not, and that's why there's links that, he, you know, there's offers for him in Europe, and Tenag will probably look to move him on. Yeah, I mean, X, uh, sorry, SLXIS says 13 million for Hendo can pay for the Amrabat transfer. I mean, that might happen once we get an honor, you know, things kind of fall into place that way. Savage says, I want Lavia, not Amrabat. 50 million for Lavia can be done by the club if we just start selling some right, dead. Can I just ask, have I missed the memo here about Amrabat? What? Why, why, why is it we're going for Amrabat with Manchester United? I did that, that name, I'm about, he's playing for Watford for like five years ago. Why, why are we now going in for him? He's had a good World Cup, that's why. Right. If I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, let me know. But I just, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm hearing Amrabat and I'm thinking, who's Amrabat? <laughs> who's Amrabat? I think Amrabat is a good <laughs> Who is player. It? I think he's a good player. Obviously, I've not watched him week in, week out for Fiorentina. But when I watched Fiorentina. him at, at the World Cup, he, he was very good for Morocco. And plus, as well, he's not exactly going to be a starter because Casemiro's going to start. He's gonna I know be, he's not going to be a starter. He's going to be that player that comes in. And he's worked with Ten Hag before as well. Ten Hag loves people. He's oh, worked with yeah, before, well, well, But I do agree. Let's let's talk about that because I agree with that super chat that says I want Lavia and Amrabat. I've made it very clear. I would prefer Lavia. Yeah. He's 19... He's playing the Premier League very well last year. I know Southampton did go down, but, you know, he played really well in that team. You've got years ahead to kind of work under Casemiro, learn it, yeah. do it. He just looks like he's got so much so much higher of a ceiling. So, you know, 
but he's Lavia a name that I don't excite you more. I just don't yeah. think yeah, well, can do it because of the timings. I just think Lavia is a better shout because he's he's played in the Prem. He knows he intends to well, so is, well, I say Amrabat's played in the Prem. I'm sure he got relegated with Watford. Could be wrong though. Um I th I, th I think Lavia is a better shout because like you say, I think he's got a higher ceiling, he can learn off Casemiro, but I just think I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm Amrabat, flabbergasted. Did Amrabat play for what I don't think Amrabat did play for Watford. I'm I'm sure he did. I don't think he did. He played he started he, you start. Let me let me have a look oh, at his career. I could, like, I unless could be you've wrong, got the yeah. wrong guy. I must, I must have got mixed up then, but I'm sure he's played. Amrabat. Can someone in the chat tell me if Amrabat's played for Watford? But like, that like, is his old, his older brother who played for Watford. Is it? Oh, you yeah. got the right. Oh, I've got him mixed up. We'll give you that then. one then. Yeah. Oh, I'll take it though. Yeah. He's, quite a, he's quite a decent player. Barcelona are in for him in January. Right, well, I've got mixed up with his older brother then, so count everything I've just said. Void. <laughs> Everything I just said is void because I got the wrong player. My apologies. But you started saying Watford, I was like, I'm sure. That's why I was. That's why. That's why I was sat here thinking, why are we going for Amrabat? <laughs> <laughs> why? <laughs> I mean, but I mean, Kev, Lavia, thoughts? Uh, I have to agree with Miss, Mr. Angry Ginge that he is uh, Premier League proven. No, he's uh, not. That was his brother. Oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> Jesus, that's where we got stuck in there. Lavia, right, right. Let's right. start proven. again then. Um, yeah, <laughs> totally <laughs> throw me now. Totally throw me. It makes sense to go for Lavia for 50 million, for 20 million and more. What is the Amrabat? 20 odd million, if I'm not mistaken? He's 25 million. 25, they'll be, you know, here and there. So I think 40, 45 million makes that deal happen with Lavia. I wouldn't say Lavia is Premier League proven because technically his team did go down. Mm. So he's not proven anything. Yeah. But what you, what you can say is, yes, he's played in the Premier League at a very young age, in a very terrible side, and has shown extreme amount of levels. And th what you have to understand is his ability to turn. This is, I keep, I keep emphasising this. The ability to turn on the ball whilst you're being pressed. Look at actually, funny enough, look at England under-21s. Look at how free-flowing they play out from the back. It's like they play their eights and the sixes right in the box and they're just able to find their way out of tight spots. That's what Ka Caicedo, that's what Lavia can do, especially in the Premier League with, you know, with um, forwards like Jesus pressing you all for 90 minutes, Haaland pressing you for 90 minutes, you have Ollie Watkins pressing you all the time, maybe Ivan Toni as well when his ban is finished coming back. So these forwards will all, you know, Salah and all of this, they'll press the hell out of you and you need players who will be able to turn on the ball. Amrabat, unfortunately, as, as good as a World Cup as he's had... I think Amrabat can turn on the ball. He's not, uh, there's levels to this. And that's why Frankie de Jong is, is the best, you know, one of the best well, in the world. Look at Angel, Angel Gomez. Like Caicedo's one of the best in the world. The Camabunda. way he's been yeah. performing, Angel there's, Gomez. I'll, I'll be honest, there's, there's Did levels. Did you just say a Angel Gomez is one of the best No, in the I world. didn't say that. He said that. I said Camavinga. I said... No, I said look at his performances. Yeah, he said Angel, Angel Gomez. Gomez. He's fancy talking about somebody who can, like, take the ball from the keeper, whatever, spin, yeah. turn and that. I'm just saying, we, we give away these players, don't yeah. we, for listen, Casemiro. He be for us listen, now, Cas who? Angel, Angel Gomez. Yeah, I'm not he mentioning him. It's not. Yeah, I'm just saying. Look at England under 21. How free flowing they're playing. Just for an example, that's the type you want to play. Is free flowing football where you can just in three passes move the ball from your goalkeeper right up to yeah, the opposition's the half. That's how quick you want to move. On top of it as well, Casemiro, as great as he is, he's really bad when he gets pressed. He loses the ball quite a bit. We've seen this numerous times. very good at keeping the ball. But this, there's, there's, compared to a 19-year-old who's played in the Prem, and there's Caicedo, obviously, who's out I was going to say, if money's no object, different. Caicedo will be no, better. I, 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 I totally would prefer Lavia, but, but Amrabat is good at keeping hold of the ball, and he can progress it. Not as good as Lavia. I, that's just my opinion. Yeah, I but then Lavia is could could, not in the position where he can play as a holder for United right now. He can, he, he can become that player. He can become it, and that's why I would prefer him, because he's got that. Obviously, you know. we have Casemiro right now, so, yeah, he can become that player. Um... I think it's just the right deal to do for 19 year old. These are the type of signings we want to make because in three years' time, that 19 year old becomes 70, 80 million pounds easy. Especially, consi yes. especially considering, you know, it's not as if he's coming into a starting spot. He has time. Yeah. It's Casemiro who's going to be starting. He's, he's going to be rushed. learning under him. But it's the perfect time to get Lavia. Casemiro in two seasons will be, with all due respect, will be fading out a bit. So that's the perfect. In two seasons, you'll have. Uh, uh, Lavia be probably 100 million if we don't make. I'd be I'd be surprised if uh, you know a big team doesn't come and sweep him up. Very surprised. Robert McCormack says Lavia. If we are getting another, um, did I miss some up here? Mohamed Idris says, is there any news on a new centre back? And I would like Lavia. Nope, there's not. Just because at the moment I don't think we go for a centre back unless. I I, I have leave. a gut feeling we're not going to sign a centre back. No, I just have I just have a gut no, feeling we're not gonna. We're not gonna. We've yeah, not we got the money. We've not got the money. And to be honest, 
I know we need one, but it's not as high the priority list as no. other positions. I was just going to say, and that is the thing about this transfer window has been priorities. Yeah, I think priority it is so. just shot to pieces. It has been total scattergun. I am really happy with the signing of Mason Mount, but I said it just before we got the here, you, here we go last Thursday that I said I still don't think he was Eric Ten Hag's like top top mm. player that he wanted. Oh, we've not even we've not even spoke again. I think he. We will I have to disagree with you on that, Kev. He was, he was his top player that he wanted, because you know you can see it in that video. Not Frankie De Jong. Where he's saying, obviously Frankie De Jong was the top one, of course. So if he but, was, and Mason Mount was the next one, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not saying he's a plan B or whatever. He's still this great summer player. going into this summer. It's been yeah, Mason Mount. The whole, it's yeah. been the whole way through. And that video where he said, like, I really want you to be important and play for this team. You can see Eric Ten Hag like values him. Mm. We've not even spoke about Mount Seven yet. I'm gonna get everyone's opinions on that because um, I know everyone's got different <laughs> ones. Mario Franco says, um, Alvarez played for Ten Hag and he's available for 40 mil. He could also be a good Casemiro backup. He's also younger than Amrabat. Lavia, best option though. I honestly do really like Alvarez, I, I, but I just don't know if we can go in and read Ajax again, to be honest with you. And I think Lavia, for me, would be would be the one to go for, but he, he's I'm definitely, he's sure defi many, he's yeah, definitely a good shout. Well. Is yeah, it? But yeah, he apparently is, is but there? I just don't think. How? Any, After one season? I don't think there's any chance there. Yeah, it's too, too I absolutely love him. God, I love him. But I just don't think there's a chance. Jerome T, with no sales going out, only a hundred twenty million pound budget. How on earth are we going to get a number nine? Worrying times. We will. We are going to get a number nine. Steve runs. Amrabat is actually good on the ball and press resistant. Who do you think should, our second strike should be? I agree. I think Amrabat is good on the ball. Um, and he, he keeps possession really well. Second striker. Not even gone out and got a first yet, so I don't think second strike is going to happen. I think second strike is going to be Rashford or Martial, isn't it, at this point? Oh and Vagast again, just saying. Yeah. Oh God, please, please don't. Please be Vagast again. What, 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 what is it with Vagast? Please, like, no. Let's so have this God. today. So what is God. it with Vagast? I uh, ask you this question: How many Carabao, Carabao Cup semi-finals has Haaland scored in? <laughs> and how many has Vagast scored in? I rest my case. Uh, <laughs> cheers. Thank you very much. Oh, God. Vegas one, Harlan nil. Thank you. Angry, so angry Ginge one, Faz nil. <laughs> <laughs> He's got no answer to that. <laughs> how, many, how many Premier League goals did Harlan score and how many did Vegas score? Oh, Premier, score. Premier, League's not, that, that Premier League's not important, is it? No. It's zero, Car by the way. Does Premier League have an energy drink? No, they don't. Carbo, <laughs> do they? Oh, gosh. It's honestly... Do you know what? People... I know people are worried about striker. I am slightly worried, I've got to be honest, because, I mean... Got done now, we're probably going to get an Anna done. I think that's very close. And then if we are, do go by the budget, we've got a set. And I honestly, I'm thinking, if we could have done the Highland, why haven't we moved sooner? I just, I, I know Mark does say it's hotter than the sun, and, you know, trust, trust. Mark has caused there. global warming. Yeah. The guy keeps, he keeps saying hotter than the sun, and he's caused global warming now. <laughs> I've got a tan in a freaking space of the time he said hotter than the sun. And he's, the sign is still not done. And I'm not happy as well because that's is one striker's not enough. No, and especially a striker that we don't really know if he can yeah, start. Yeah, and you know how Manchester United fans are. He's gonna miss a sitter some point next season, and they're gonna say we made a mistake. This they don't have patience. We don't have patience. We're gonna end up, you know, drawing a game or two here and there where Rasmus could have got got the winner, and people would say, yeah, we should have got Gonzalo Ramos. Yeah, we should have got X, you know, this, that, the other. And let's be honest, Rashford in the striker, I don't want to see it at all. At all, let him be the winger that he is. It'd be silly is. to put Rashford up front after the season he's had from the left. It'd just be silly. Yeah, just keep him on the left. Why would you? He exactly. did play front, That's his best position. He did play up front <coughs> a few <coughs> times, but I, I, I still I think, think I, I agree he's a left winger. Against Liverpool, I think he played up front for second half. Yeah. Bagged, bagged the winner. Yeah, he's, he's, he can play that role, but it's not someone you want to rely on for the whole season playing that role. He still will play some games, I think, it's striking next yeah. year. You just don't want to have to rely on that. But we'll have to wait and see. What are your guys' thoughts? I mean, Fazal, you, what are your thoughts on maybe, I was speaking to Adam about this earlier, getting Tarimi in and then waiting for the new ownership and going for a world-class striker next year? No. No, that's just going backwards. That's taking three steps back. You can't take go one step forward God. next <laughs> next season. It doesn't matter. No one needs to disrespect much better to go and get Rasmus Hoyland, and then you know maybe I, I would even, as funny as it sounds, I would sacrifice my own feelings, which I've done all season with Martial. I'd sacrifice my feelings for one more season, keep him, and the ownership situation's done. Then you can you can see. Um, yeah, then we can get Harry Kane. Uh, Harry, whoever on free yeah. or Gonzalo Ramos, whoever is, is there. And in a season's time. I promise you, there'll be some random striker pop up out of nowhere, and people will be like, "Oh, he's the next best thing." 
So that you know, yeah, but don't go three steps back. How, how old is he? Thirty years old or something? Serene is thirty-one. No, he's good, he is good though. Let, let yeah, him give a striker there. from Porto. Listen. Yeah. Oh. People, <laughs> I'm not even going to comment no, on that one. That's ridiculous. That. You've been hanging around That's... with Jack a lot, haven't you? <laughs> 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 I've just clocked it. Yeah, we've, we've hung around a little. Yeah. <laughs> we have words after this. No, can I just say it's not summer? Do you think? Do you really think how, I'm? Th I'm sat here thinking. Yeah, you know what? I definitely think we should get Tarimi in, and then you just said it. I said it could be an option, and I was asking for your opinion. I, I think I don't think he's a bad player. I think he's a decent player. I think he's definitely better than having Valverde cost in one hundred percent. And I think he is someone that can come in and do a job. Do would I rather be going for a player that can come in and you know be the next best thing for Man United? Of course, I would love to go for Harry Kane. But you know, if people want Harry Kane, maybe you do have to wait until he's on a free next year. You have to sell some players. Yeah. Run no the club, way. bring money in now and get a top class number nine. None of this arsing about this yeah. plucking players from different leagues and oh, he scored an Ooh. overhead kick last week, he's <laughs> the next best thing. So, what you know, you're not, it's been staring us in the face for years, I even prior to bringing Ronaldo back to Old Trafford, he was supposed to be the final piece of the jigsaw or whatever. You know, it did not work out one bit. We need a well, I'd say Harry Kane, but you know. It's easy to say that at this moment in time, but it's, it's the money issue, isn't it's it? Money. Someone it is in the, the money. chat just it said, is. why not buy Ferguson for 30 mil? It's only, if only it was that simple. Yeah. No yeah. way on it. Evan Genius. Ferguson. Yeah. Listen, the window's probably a 6 out of 10 without, with Rasmus Hoyland because he's not guaranteeing don't you, don't us you think 20 goals. Don't you think it's crazy, though? So let's, let's just talk about the window for a sec. So you, yeah. Mount's done, probably going to get an Anna. And then let's say, you know, the other two signs are going to be Count another, Rasmus Hoyland, yeah. another midfielder. Amrabat or Lavia, for now, looks like the one. Oh, and then, Hoyland. So you've got... So you so Let me go for it again. Mount, Anana, Amrabat or Lavia and Hoyland. That window you're saying is around a six, aren't you? Yes. He's mad that if you change Hoyland to Harry Kane, it automatically goes to a ten. It's a ten. Or an eight, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It does. It's crazy. It's it's crazy. crazy. It's saying it has to be the best striker class. in the world. Yeah. yeah, because that's the difference between ten goals and 25 goals. Yeah. That's how crazy still, it is. is, he, is he, am I delusional? That I'm well, still yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. <laughs> right there. <Yeah. laughs> Am I delusional for thinking? There's still, I feel, I still feel like there's a slight glimmer of hope. We go back in for Kane. Yeah. Why yeah, no, haven't I, we I, moved yeah. on the striker yet? I, I think that as well. And you know, Daniel Levy. We had Mark Ogden on the show. He said, "There's no way on earth Daniel Levy's letting Kane go for free." So if Kane refuses to sign a new contract, Daniel mm -hmm. Levy right now is trying to get him to sign a new contract. If Kane refuses to sign a new contract, he's going to have to, cash gonna in. Have to go. I don't think Kane wants to go to Bayern Munich and just win the Farmers League every year, even though, respect for going and getting trophies, but we know he's looking at that Alan Shearer yeah. record. Yeah. Please just put a transfer request in. That's it's, all I ask. It's yeah. a bit like the Paris situation with Mbappe at the minute. They've clearly said, we yeah. are not losing this player for free. Daniel Levy is not, he's not going to cut off his nose to spite his face for one season and say, this team will be better. You know, We could get top four with Harry Kane in it mm. and then lose him for free. He does not work like that. So, and that is, I, I don't see Bayern Munich. I don't see him going to Germany. Up there. I think he'd be silly to go to Germany. The, the, <laughs> Crazy things happen right to the end of the world. Yeah, it's right you know? at the end. So you can see. How I reckon Kane we get him for eighty million. Can you last say day? this now, and it will be like the last day of the window. Some thirty-four-year-old striker from God knows what. It's <laughs> gonna be in it, yeah, yeah, from the Chinese league or something. <laughs> or... But no, I think I think it could, it could. Listen, it could. Anything could happen, but it all comes down. Listen, there's a lot of things going on in Manchester United. We the this preseason is literally around the corner, and we don't know what's happening with Mason Greenwood yet let alone going and buying another yeah. a, a world-class striker. The club, a player that's supposed to be deciding on what's happening with him, we don't know. So there's clearly a lot going on in the back. This Harry Kane situation being one of them or a striker situation being one of them because who's going to come for Anthony Martial? Is he going to stay? That's, Martial's you know, not going anywhere. Th this is what I mean. So it could, it could be that they don't go for Harry Kane and, and Martial ends up staying. If Martial gets sold for £25 million on a magical dream that I'm having then that money can be used towards the hurricane and some more from somewhere else. But if you're replacing two players to get one, you're going to be down on squad depth. You're not going to have enough players. You're just going to be end up with you know, players having to bring them to our academy. I'd rather have less players, but the players be quality and not taking up random spots. I'd that, it's easier said, need. Beth. It's easier said, but it when you're facing quality over quantity. Yeah, but when like, you're facing FA Cup games and you're strength strength low on depth. squad By depth, way, yeah, I'm, not I'm not talking about that. I'm talking like players <clears> such as like you know, Bailly, Tellez, Williams, players that sure. just aren't going to see the night like a day in a United shirt again. Sure. 
in my opinion. Um, Robert McCormack mm. says, not delusional, you're bang on, Beth. Thanks, that's one person out of the 10,000 people that are watching. <laughs> so thank you. Um, that's Jack, that, and he's burner. No, it's, <laughs> no, it's not. You don't, know, you don't know Robert McCormack? Robert McCormack is a legend of the United Stand community. Oh, okay. Jerome T. Green, if we don't get a striker, do we have to try Ahmad up front? I know it's not ideal, but probably won't, and it probably won't work, but it's better than nothing. If we don't get a striker, it's Rashford up front, isn't it? Let's be honest. Yeah. And uh, Sancho and Garnacho off the left. But um, just Keevan says, serious question, do Beth and Faz get along? No, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> no, we do. We do. Um, but I'll stand you. <laughs> Tall. But you've been the one begging for Hernandez for the last week. You're the one asking me to pay for it. Because <laughs> I lost the bet. You won the bet. Sorry, you lost the yeah, bet. Yeah, I won the bet. You lost the bet. Anyway, let's move on to the next subject of conversation. I mean, there was talks that Colin Moani's price is going down to 78 million euros. Hoyland is rumoured to be around 60 to 70 million euros. What's your preference on that, Faz? Hoyland. <sighs> uh, yeah, he's just... He's younger, isn't he? It's always going to be more attractive to go for a younger player who's got way more, loads more potential. And um, I just feel like he's he can become more of a out and out number nine. I don't I don't understand this. Flu I don't want to go back to this Martial era at all. I just want a guy who'll stick in between the net and just literally tap the ball in. I I couldn't even care less if the goals are really poor goals or cheap goals or whatever. But that's the type of striker you want because those are the strikers that get 15 plus goals a season. When you start drifting out wide and etc., you, you're coming in between playing with um, Rashford and then, you know, Anthony or Sancho, it gets too much. Clinical striker who's good in the air, who's good with both feet, terrorise defenders, stay in the middle, that's it. And that's what Rasmus Holland can become. Yeah. Uh, Ginge? How old is Kurt Kurt Colin Moana? 24. 24 and Holland is? 20. 20. You see, I would... And going off the stats this season, Colo, I would say, argue, has had a bit better of a season. Yeah, he's, but, he's a more established player. Yeah, he's a more established. But then it just comes down to if we can bulk up Hoyland and make him an absolute beast, then there's no reason to why we shouldn't do that. He's got four years of extra learning. There's four years more in the gym, four more years with under Ten Hag. It's, he's got so much to learn. I think he could literally be another Harry Kane if we treat him and train him right. Well, this is what I mean. The, the ceiling of Hoyland does seem to be like... Um, unreal and it'd be so good if we could have you know United probably if we would have had all our ducks in a row should have been going for both of them players mm, this yeah. summer but Kev what are your thoughts on that? I have to agree on uh, Hoyland uh, I, it's funny we were talking before about players getting hyped up and stuff I mean he, he, apparently he's the new Haaland isn't he you know what if you Hoyland read about it you know the best thing to come out of what Scandinavia since yeah. kind of Haaland he is getting hyped so up uh, there's, there's, there's no way, by the way, that he's anywhere near Haaland yet. Shea. I just don't want anyone to get carried no, away. No, but people him. will make comparisons and that. You know, you watch clips of him. Anyone can look good, can't they? Yeah. On a clip on YouTube. You know, I've seen You're the Fred example. looks like. I'm, I am a, a good <laughs> example of that. Yeah, even Fred. You know what I mean? He looks like prime Ronaldinho. You can watch some. Oh, clips disrespect, of him. Fred. Fred's yeah, a player. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. I'm Maybe sure these the players are in your DMs because the way you. Has <laughs> <laughs> to. <laughs> He's Scott McTominay as well. Him. He's just a white yaya at all. So, right. so, so, so <laughs> let's just. He's a player. I love him. Move forward with this. If Ginge was kind of. Is this you know, Ricky in, in disguise? Or <laughs> no, what, if it? Ginge no. was in charge at United, we'd be coming 10th every year. No, we're not. We're winning the league. So you, so he, Would we play in National League? <laughs> I didn't say what league. <laughs> <laughs> so we're winning, winning the league. league. So you'd play McTominay in United's first team? What? No, I didn't say that. I said he's a white yaya at all, right? Depends what you've got around him, it depends who you're playing. Oh, you know, if, if I'm, I'm sorry, but did you see how good Yaya Torre was for Manchester City? You see how good Scott McTominay is? Oh, oh come on, man. man. What, have, you, have you seen how, who's in for Scott McTominay? Who? Roma and Roma. And, he, and who's, Mourinho. Who, who, who's the manager? Jose Mourinho. Does Jose Mourinho know what he's talking about? Yes, he does. Thank you, you very do, much. You do, right, OK. Thank but you. if Scott McTominay was as good as you were saying, surely there would be clubs lining up all over the world to get him. Top clubs. Oh, that's, that's their loss, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, Harland's arguably the best striker in the world. No one's going for him yet. Can we talk about this number seven shirt? Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. We've got um, no MVD says Moani has more to offer than Hoyland, and we've got another Goncalo one. Goncalo Ramos in. is a better striker Mario than both of them. Mario Franco says it's yeah, time, guys, season. bring back Mercedes. 
Um, <laughs> Makeda. <laughs> um, so. Makeda. <laughs> Sammy <laughs> says, why can't we sell players to Saudi Arabia like Chelsea who could easily get 60 million for tellers if we sold into El Nasser? I, even Saudi Arabia are not, uh, are not paying 60 million for tellers. I'll tell you that for a fact. But Faz has requested Faz will get mount number seven. I forgot to go into that a little bit earlier. I like we'll how get, you said that. But we'll get on to it I now. Get, I like that. You request, you get. Mount number seven. I mean, you know what, Kev, we'll come to you first on this one. I wanted to hear what <laughs> this man had to say first. <laughs> but Menace. Go on. I'm going to dab your Nando's in the extra hot sauce now. I like it hot. Extra, extra hot. I like it hot and spicy. Okay, cool. We'll <laughs> we're going we're gonna to clip this over. We'll see. Um, Kev, number seven for Mount. Thoughts on it? I really, really couldn't care. I've, I've read so much about it this week. I've, listen, I was a little surprised when I seen it. Mount number seven, and he did the whole thing. He, he didn't play the banjo like I predicted. He was going to glory, glory Man United on the banjo. <laughs> but he was presented with the number seven shirt on Mount. And I, I, listen, I was a little surprised when I seen it. I thought, ooh, bit of a curveball thrown in there. And Bappe's not coming, obviously, this summer because yeah. everybody reads into this. Sheikh Jassim's keeping the seven shirt. He's waiting for to take over the club and then he's going to present us with Mbappe. So it kind of ended them social media rumours, but it really doesn't bother me. And I, I know there's a lot of people I've been reading stuff that are saying the number seven shirt, it's iconic. George Best, uh, Brian Robson, uh, what is it like Cristiano Can't Ronaldo, uh, yeah, Beckham and, and so on and so on. But at the same time, there's been a lot of bad players that have wore that number seven shirt recently. Antonio Valencia, Memphis Depay, uh, Do not Di disrespect Maria. Antonio Valencia. <laughs> Stop what, so you can't around. disrespect Antonio it Valencia. Was, but the, the seven shirt was too big for him and he even right, admitted it. Right, right but Valencia, a, he's a player. He went back to his old number. Uh, Michael Owen as well. Well, he scored. He won the Ballon d'Or, though, to be fair. Not for United. Yeah, I know he didn't, but he still won it. Right, OK. But it does not <laughs> bother me, the number seven shirt. Uh, I, I think Mason Mounts... I don't know whether Manchester United have offered it him or whether he asked for it. Now, if he asked for it, I'm more impressed. And if Mason Mount goes up, in my opinion, the fact that if he's got the balls to join Manchester United mm. and go, I want the seven shirt, fair enough. I think he, he's a fantastic signing for Manchester United. I don't know the man that's staring at me here, Faz, uh, was a great ad advocate of giving it to Garnacho. Uh, and at the time, I think we had a little bit of a debate where I said... We don't need to overhype yeah. Garnacho. I don't think by Garnacho, you I you have to earn the shirt. Young. Some people might say, well, Mason Mount's only just walked through the door. You know, he was Chelsea's player of the year two, two seasons in a row. He has won day, the yeah. Champions League. So. He made a crucial assist in that final for the yeah. only goal. And look at the stats that have come out recently. Mason yeah. Mount. Since his debut, he's been literally Chelsea's best player. Yeah. yeah. So, in that sense, I think he has earned the right to, to wear it. And if he's asked for it, he goes up in my estimation even more. <clears throat> Fair play. Well, before we bring you guys in, I just want to tell... And I know there's a really mixed opinion on whether Garnacho should have got it or not. Garnacho started five games for Man United last season in all competitions, and his average play time when he did play for Man United was 29 minutes. So... You know, he's not starting week in, week, yeah. out, week in, week out. He's not like a mainstay in that team. And we're talking Has, about overhyping yeah. young players, you know what I mean? Give Garnacho yeah, the number he, seven. He's, too, he's got his teeth sorted, he's got early. his white hair now, he <laughs> just needs a number seven, he's got the tattoos, he's got the lot. Give him the seven. He's 19 you have to years earn old. It. He's 19 years old. I know Ronaldo got it when he was 18, mm. I get that. But, you know, we don't have to force this Ronaldo, exactly. second coming of Ronaldo on Garnacho. I think Garnacho's going to be an unbelievable player. I, I do, do truly, truly believe it. But... Mason Mount's got the seven. It's not as if, you know, you've gone and brought Phil Jones back and stuck the seven on his back mm. and said, welcome back. That's how people are acting about it, genuinely. Mason Mount's got the seven. He's won a Champions League. He's, he's done a lot in his career. And I do think, is it a little bit odd that it's gone to a midfielder? Yeah, it is. Was I shocked it happened? Yes, I was. But I think we've got to back it. I mean, Faz, I know you're itching to come in, so give your piece. Don't back anything at all. Good player. Has to prove himself in Manchester United. Hasn't proved anything in Manchester United. Casemiro had to prove himself as well when he came into Manchester United. People were arguing, saying, oh, he's being benched because of Scott McTominay, this, that, the other. Every player who walks through this door has to prove themselves because big-name players have come and wore that number seven shirt and have crumbled. <gasps> sorry, guys. Oh, I've sorry. just got... I was ready for a here we go, then. No, it's not here we go. <laughs> Don't get scared. I'll let you finish. Faz is sweating. <laughs> but we've just got a little bit of breaking news and it's coming from Jason Burt at The Telegraph and he's saying, breaking, Manchester United are set to launch a bid for Rasmus Hoyland. Oh, wow. 
Wow, wow, wow. That wow. made you go, oh my God. Yeah, we were, because we were just speaking about it. <laughs> yeah, this and we've already bid him for an honor. And, you know, we're going for Hoyland now. I'm very shocked United are moving, like, I'm not saying they've moved quick, but it's very rare we get three signings in before, you know, we start. It's like somebody's just woke We've only got one room and gone. So yeah, we need to get start getting signings <laughs> through the door. We're playing a friend we'll next week. back from his holiday, that's what. Yeah. Let's get this show on the, the road, The bid has not gone in yet, so it's, it's not even, let the bid go in first and then we'll know because... They'll probably reject the first bit anyways. It's still exciting. Carry on. I just want to let the viewers know. <laughs> Listen, this number seven thing, it matters so much. So much. Because no other club in the world has a shirt number as big as Manchester United and number seven. No, name me another one. Barcelona and number no, 10. Well, no chance. And that's the Messi fans who, who are trying to shit on this number seven situation. I promise As you. It's, no, it's not. <laughs> No, Cristiano Ronaldo, number seven, Manchester United, number seven, the players, the legends who have won this number is so big and it's so important. I just got one more thing to say. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming again. Now, it's coming from the Times Sports, so, you know, very reliable outlet. Man United are preparing a first bid of £50 million for Rasmus Hoyland. So that's what the first bid is set to be. £50 million, discuss in the comments, is that a fair bid? And you know what? Faz, I'll let you finish up your your mix Listen, listen long point. story short, I'm just not happy with the number seven, but I can't change it. He's got it now. Um, you've promised that you're going to buy his shirt. So what would you have done there? Like, I get my head around this. I'll give you, it to Garnacho. So you would have given it Garnacho. Yes, I would take over that Mason Mount. Yes, I would take that risk because what? I just I, I, listen. Last season we were sat here begging for that kid to start some games, and that wasn't because of squad depth. I promise you, there was times in games where we were like, well, if Ganacha started, he would have been better, or oh, bring him on. Why is the gaffer not bringing him on? But he's done well, regardless of how the season went. The gaffer's phased him in slowly, giving him the odd starting minutes, yeah. giving him the odd moments here, and every time he's proven it. And more than anything, he's not just proven it against some small cup games. He's done it in the big, against Bar the big Barcelona, the winner of the La Liga. He took their defenders and their players for a spin. And that's the type of player who should be wearing number seven. Not a player who's at 30 plus game contribution last season and scored three goals. That's what Mason Mount did last season. He could win Champions so, League and he didn't but you Chelsea. can't. I don't think you can yeah. penalise no. Mason Mount because that whole Chelsea I'm, team, listen, the whole I, team I want, was absolutely oh, abysmal. Was garbage, so I want yeah. something that makes me go and to the edge of my seat and stand up in Old Trafford. That's what Manchester United number seven is to me. Garnacho. To me. And Ganacho does. Do. Every time he has the ball, people stand up from their seat. Right, that's, so that's what... As an impact player. Ganacho got the number seven this season, right? But Tanag eases he him in again. So let's say he starts 10 games. So for 28 games, you want the number seven shirt sat on the bench? I don't care. The kid is obsessed with it. He, he is obsessed. You, you don't become ready for something like that. You have to trust him and give him the opportunity, give him the power for him to grow into the shirt. Also, That's how it should be. What's wrong with earning it? One good season. You don't know how this... I think he's going to be good again, but you yeah, don't know how it's going to pan out. Like, you don't know. Again, I, I, I just feel like... You know? I just feel like we took the... We took the um, safer route of giving it to a player and yeah it's a Chelsea player he's coming but it doesn't matter if he does well in Manchester United he's a Manchester United player but I, th I feel like it's a safe option it's a safe bet that they've taken instead of having some cojones and going with and this thing about oh he's a young player blah 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 blah, blah. there are young 19 year olds killing the world of football left right and centre nobody says they're young then but because Ganacho's 19 years old and people just want to be safe they say oh yeah he's 19 don't overhype it people were overhyping Amadiallo all season People were literally saying, bring Ahmad back and let's... On January, they were saying, bring Ahmad back and, Nobody and stick him. Nobody was saying to give him the seven shirt, though. No, but you know what I mean? This overhype situation, it's not hyping the player any more than what he is. The kid has been the most impactful of player off the bench in Premier League. Yes, it's off the bench. I get it. But I think he can be that player who's ready. I really do. Well, I think every, he's got to earn the, the I know, right. I know a lot of people think that way. Everyone's got a different opinion. United all the way says the one thing people have to be worried about with Anana is that while his distribution has always been great, last year was his first elite shot-stopping year. Hopefully that was not an outlier. Then we have Neil Wainwright says, for a member for 10 months, hi Beth, what is Faz talking about? <laughs> um, <laughs> he's giving his opinion like everybody has a right to and there's a lot of people out there that think Ganacho should have the seven, but... It is what it is. Mark, Mark, did, a, wait, Mark did a poll yesterday and 70, and Mark has a lot of views on his shows, 70% of the people disagreed with giving Mark the number seven. So Happy that says, tells you. I don't know about you, but I'm expecting 20 goals and assists from Mount in the league if he's repping that seven. We'll be supporting him a thousand percent, but I'm watching Eric Ten Hag now big time. Yep. 
and then we've got another super chat in everyone's getting excited about the Hoyland stuff have I got them all yeah I've got them all for now but we do quickly before we round up the show want to speak about that Hoyland bid because it is rumoured that it's going in for 50 million pounds but a little bit of extra news pounds. is now 50 million pounds although the deal might have to wait for the resolution of the sale process is what the Telegraph is saying. Yeah. Man United yeah. believe that they can deliver Rasmus Hoyland this summer for around £50 million, although the deal might have to wait for a resolution of the sale process. I mean, we were told that it's not going to matter about the sale and getting players in, whereas it clearly is. now it looks yeah. like it is going to because it's being reported from the Telegraph that that is the case. I want to say it's really, really, really frustrating. But we'll have to wait and see. The Hoyland news, though, is massively heating up. The Telegraph article has just been released now and it does look like a bid's going to go in for £50 million. I mean, do you think that's the right price for Hoyland, Ginge, last you? £50 million, I think it'll get rejected, to be honest. I, I, I don't... I just think that's it'll be... too much for me. Way too much. It's un, uh, that's, that's ridiculous. I'd say £35, £40 million. Yeah, but I still think it's going to get rejected. I think they'll, they'll just want more because they know that we will offer... Like, we'll probably go 50 with 5 mil add-ons next and stuff like that. And they know that they'll probably squeeze more out of us. They know we're desperate. Yeah, That's what exactly. It is. We're desperate. Um, Savage says, Ganacho is not ready, he's young, and this is, Sir Alex Ferg is, this is not Sir Alex Ferguson's United anymore. There's a reason why so many previous sevens have failed. Mount, Mason Mount Seven all the way. I like the fact that you're getting behind the player who's just got in. You know, Ganacho does seem like he's okay with it. We don't know his actual feelings, but they've interacted a little on social media. We'll have to wait and see. But, I mean, Kev, not Kev, Faz, you just said <coughs> then, £50 million. Pounds. You feel like it's too much. I've got to be honest, I feel like it's too much for nine yeah. goals in, in, in Serie A last year. What? Where do you think this is going to... How much do you reckon we'll end up paying for him? 60, probably. And that's just... That's massively overpaying. I think that's doubled the value of, of the actual player as well, considering what he's achieved and done. You'd think £60 million pounds is the likes of Kolo Wani, who's got international, who's yep. got international uh, pedigree, who's got good pedigree from, from the club that he's in. But for Rasmus Hoyland, you know, yeah, he's younger, but it's just we're just being rinsed here and, and mm -hmm. being taken for an idiot. Considering, look at Manchester, Manchester City's second striker, Alvarez, and how much he was and the impact he makes yeah. from just the amount of games he barely plays. And we're going paying 50, 60 million pounds for someone who's starting, who's similar, you know, young, 20 years old. I don't know how old is Alvarez, 21, something like that. Something. Yeah. It's so, what so you're bad. talking 60 million pounds? 50 yeah, million, 50 million, million to begin with. But I think you'll get rejected. I don't think so. Yeah. If United had their head screwed on and they were good at selling players, and we could maybe offload Maguire, you're not going to like the McTominay bit, but a player like McTominay, maybe Fred, you're making up maybe about 50 plus million there off them players, and then you put the 50 million with the 50 million that you put, you're going to put on Hoyland. And then you go for Harry Kane because apparently 100, 110 might be enough for Tottenham to shift him, and yep. you're getting a top class number nine in, which could turn you from being top four contenders to actually title challengers yeah, for next understand. season. Yeah, I'm dreaming with that, but I, I, there's no join way. me, join me, honestly, join, join the, the positivity. Band. Javier Penazola says, any news on outgoings? Not yet. Although, actually, guys, Fred has got multiple clubs that are after him and it looks like he's going to go. Romano did say that. Jack Fawcett, again in with another super chat, says, Tarimi with a flying high emoji. <laughs> um, dreams over. Hoyland, I am excited for Hoyland, I am. And Robert McCormick says, I like the look of him, but, but that price is a massive gamble. It is a gamble. You're going into the Goncalo Ramos price range, and yes, he's quoted at about 100 million. But I promise you, the likes of Bayern and those sorts of teams go in for you know um, Goncalo Ramos, and they'll get these deals deals done for 70, 80 million. Mm. And you're paying 60 million. Never in a million years will another club pay 60 million or 50 million British pounds for Rasmus Hoyland. Ne nobody. It's impossible. Not for nine goals. Yeah, nobody. So. He's not even proven anything on any stage at all. <laughs> and that, that's the, the crazy thing about this transfer window is if they do wrap up Hoyland for, I don't know, 50, somewhere between 50, 60 million, we brought in Mount. I think we can all agree we probably overpaid the fact that he had one year left on his contract. No, I don't, I don't think I'm not, I'm, right, I'm, I'm I don't not bothered deal. personally. Yeah. I, I, I thought it was price. an all right. But people will look and go, a year left, you know, it's not great business. And, and you, you could look at them too and go, slightly overpaid for them or whatever. Yet yeah, Anana. 
the number one goalkeeper that's staring us in the face, I think we can all agree. Is, is, do we agree that it's good a good deal. price? It really is. Price. You know, it seems too good to you be true. You know me, I'd pay 100 mil for a keeper. <laughs> no, you would. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, guys. Diego Cabrera says, how can Hoyland be the only striker we're going for? We need someone that will score 25-plus goals a season. Yeah, I mean, we would we would love that, but I'm, I'm putting my faith in Ten Hag again. Yeah. I know we wanted Kane, but he's obviously... You know, we know United aren't the ones going after Hoyland. It is... It is Ten Hag, he scouted him out, he wants him, I put trust in him and I'm hoping he can work with him behind the scenes to make a good player, but we'll have to see how that continues everyone, but look, it's been a great show, the hour is gone, Kev, Ginge and Faz, oh. thank you so much for coming on the show, we'll have to wait and see what happens, but it looks like United are start, finally starting to pick up the pace, but everyone at home as well, thank you for watching wherever you are, thank you for all your chats, loads of good super chats today, and loads of good chats in, just to finish up the poll on what you think Anana should earn at United, finished on 53% saying 150 grand per week, which I do think it'll go down that route. But look, second bid's gone in for Andre Anana. It looks like that, that's going to be discussed. Verbal conversation's still ongoing. And it also looks like Manchester United are set to bid £50 million for Hoyland. Let's see what happens. We'll be here on the United Stand with the latest updates. Make sure you hit a like on the video and we will see you guys on the next one.